And we are live. Hello, guys. Welcome to Jason Hebert Live. We have another missing persons interview for you tonight. If you are into trying to help solve these cases and um, help these grieving families who really need your help, go ahead, click subscribe below and set the notification bell to all. We go live pretty much every single night. Uh, once in a while, we do one that's not a missing persons cases, some kind of unsolved crime. Um, but it's pretty much usually missing persons cases and something that's unsolved that you can try to help solve. The show is interactive. You'll be in the chat asking questions. We'll put them on screen for the guests and um, hopefully we can help bring some you know, resolution to these people who are suffering and just have a lot of questions. Hello to Rachel, Lisa, Tammy, the other Tammy, uh, Yvette, uh, Elizabeth, Edie, and uh, Be United, Dave Wilson. How you guys doing? Michael Douglas, Tammy, uh, Elizabeth Gibbs, Tracker, Anita. Hi to everybody. We'll get giving it just a moment for the chat to start to fill up as notifications go up. Give me one second, guys. We do have two guests tonight, and I'm I'm stalling a bit because we are waiting for one of our guests to um, not have some tech issues. But we will get started with the show, even if that doesn't happen. So. And because uh, eventually we'll get her on, but we do, we do have two very good friends of tonight's subject. Well, one a childhood friend, one that knew her a little later, so they kind of have different perspectives of her story, and um, we'll make sure to get you something nice and fully rounded out. Uh, and let me see, I have uh, Alicia. I have a third box from you, and all three say devices not connected. Um, so whatever issue you're having with those settings, it's happening on every device. Is it something in your home, your Wi-Fi or something? But either way, sorry guys, I'm gonna, let's give her a moment to see if the devices connect. I'm gonna get into the particulars of tonight's story and we'll start from there. And then we'll introduce our guests. <clears throat> sorry, I have a really bad throat thing today, guys. I'm really, really sorry. Let me try to get facing you a little bit more here. Okay. So Shannon Mary at one point was Matt Mike, sorry. Hang on, let me make sure I got everything. Okay, looks good. Yeah, maybe allergies, Elizabeth. It's really, really raw, and I keep choking myself up. Okay, sorry about that, guys. Shannon Mary at one point was married with a great job in New York City. But as problems began to arise in her life, including a substance abuse issue, everything began to fall apart. Shannon first tried moving in with her parents, but like many 30-somethings, living at home can be quite difficult. So Shannon moved in with an older woman named Helen, who had her do things around the house in exchange for living there. For a little over a year, it worked great. <clears throat> Any Anything we talk about, guys, we make no hard accusations. Um, we're simply trying to piece things together, and everything is alleged. But problems began to arise due to the odd living conditions with the couple, uh, Helen and her boyfriend, and Shannon's own issues as well. The home had a really strange arrangement. Shannon would sleep with Helen in her bed while Helen's boyfriend slept on the couch. Things got weirder when Helen began promising Shannon to her son who was in prison for violent crimes, allegedly. When Alicia remarked at how weird it was, Shannon essentially told her she was just talking to the son who is named Artie to appease Helen and to keep her living situation as stable as she possibly could. But when Artie got home, the entire dynamic of the living situation changed. And instead of with Helen, Shannon now slept up in a room in the attic with Artie. But after a few months, Shannon couldn't take the way the house was anymore and she left, telling Elisa she feared for her life because she was being accused of stealing from the home, among other things. At this point, Shannon left and went to live with a friend Tommy for five or six months, and all was well. But eventually, Tommy's father took him to live in the city, New York City, again leaving Shannon with nowhere to go and forcing her to return back to Helen's. Alicia begged her not to go back and offered Shannon the opportunity to live with her. But Shannon, partly because of her issues, needed somewhere to live where she felt she had freedom and could come and go as she pleased, and she knew she wouldn't get that at Alicia's. On Saturday, April 30th of 2013, the day before Easter Sunday, Alicia saw Shannon walking down her street back towards Helen's, a common sight because Alicia's neighborhood was commonly used for people to cut through. She spoke to Shannon for about an hour, again offering her the chance to move in with her, 
but Shannon declined. And when the conversation was over, she set back off towards Helen's house. This would be the last time Alicia would see or hear from her friend. When Alicia called her on that Monday and Tuesday, Shannon didn't answer or respond. So Alicia went to Helen's house. Her typical greeting of being welcomed in was changed, and this time the family came outside to speak with her, locking the door behind themselves and asking what she wanted. When she said, Shannon, all they would tell her is she left. Uncomfortable, Alicia left with a horrible feeling about where her friend might be, and she never saw her again. But it would later be revealed that Shannon had indeed made it home that Saturday, as she did call her mom on Easter Sunday, asking to move back home. Shannon didn't have a cell phone, so this call was made from Helen's home phone. The conversation with her mom didn't go well, so her mother told her she would give her time to cool off and call her back in two hours. When she did, Shannon never answered. No one knows what happened to Shannon Mary on that Easter Sunday and what might have transpired from the time she spoke to her mother to when she stopped answering the phone. And tonight, Shannon's friends... <clears throat> Alicia Carbonero and Laura DeSantis come on to tell her story in the hopes that someone who knows something will come forward. Uh, we are still having tech issues with Alicia, uh, so we are going to bring on Laura. Alicia, I believe you can hear me. Um, you're going to have to get that fixed in the settings. I'm really sorry. I, I'm, I'm a really bad tech person, so I, I'm probably not much help. Uh, let's, let's bring Laura on. Hi, Laura. How are you? Hi, how are you? I'm doing well. Thank you so much for coming on, and Hi. I'm so sorry for, you know, every what's go whatever is going on yes. um so do you want to start i know you were kind of childhood friends with her tell us a little bit about her and then kind of lead us into what we do know the days before in um yes um so shannon as you uh said shannon um had a job in in manhattan working as a sales assistant for citigroup um that was in about 2008 she lost her job and shannon and i were living together in long beach at the time she was getting pretty out of control, very wild. And I said to her, I think it's about time. I think I'm ready to have my own apartment. Um, at that time, Shannon ended up moving back home with her parents. Um, and shortly after that, she ended up losing her job at Citigroup. From that point, her life went downhill very, very, very fast. Um, she ended up going to AA, uh, meeting a guy there. Uh, sorry, I'm having a really hard time. Um, if you need to step off camera or take a moment, no, no problem. No, it's okay. Um, she just, she was home until about June of 2011. Um, Shannon struggled living at home with the family. Um, they struggled, she struggled with her drug use as it escalated. Um, she ended up leaving the home in 2011. Um, her family at the time did not know where she was living. Um, and that, and that was when she was living at Helen's home. Um, Shannon and I did lose touch. The last contact I had with her was via Facebook and a message on March 31st, 2012. Um, and she left that as I'll always love you. Um, so I kind of took that as she was saying goodbye to me and goodbye to that part of her life. Um, from that year, she had a very crazy, uh, crazy year. She was bit by a pit bull um, at a drug dealer's house. Um, people can see stories about that online. It says that a brown pit bull came out of nowhere and bit her. Um, it was actually at a drug dealer's home that that occurred. Um, shortly after that, she was arrested um, for forgery. That was in January. So... Why has Shannon been missing this long? Why has nobody done anything? I get that question a lot. Um, Shannon ended up having a warrant for her arrest because she did not go to court. She was in jail for five days in January of 2013. She did not want to go back to jail. She feared jail. Um, even as kids, I remember as we were in high school and we got picked up, she got arrested, not even arrested, she got a ticket, a summons, and she was horrified that her life was over. Um, so where her life went to, to her, she was extremely, extremely ashamed um, of where her life was. So she never went to court. So she was very self-aware. It wasn't like one of these people that's just barreling through. She knew she was messing up and was trying to shape up. She, she knew. She knew. She knew big time. Um, I was supposed to see her. She would never call me back. 
she, you know, different phone numbers she would have, I would never end up getting any contact with her. Um, so she ended up having a warrant for her arrest. So no one filed a missing persons report because she had a warrant. She, she was hiding, she was running, she didn't want to go to jail. Um, once I got in contact and found out no one knows where she is. Nobody's had any contact with her. There's not been a peep, not nothing. No drug dealers, no nobody. She didn't have a phone. She didn't have money. She didn't have a job. She didn't have a car. She had nothing. She had nowhere else to go but Helen's. Um, so I started to wonder. I started to dig. I started to look. Um, I would call the precincts. I would go there. Um, I would get treated as she's an addict. She doesn't want to be found. Um, and I kept pressing and pressing and pressing. I went on to NamUs, which is a missing and ident an unidentified person's database. And um, I was able to put her on there unofficially. Then she was able to be there finally, officially. Um, and I found a body that I thought could have been her. And that ended up getting me in contact with a homicide detective um, who let me know that they thought maybe at one time that could have been her also. Um, that's, and, that's, the, yeah, I was going to say that. That's, sorry. That's the landlord. Yeah. Um, that's Helen, um, who she lived with. Um, so all this time it was Shannon's hiding. She doesn't want to be found. Um, finally the police listened. Um, I was able to get a family member to go with me because I was never allowed to, because I wasn't a family member. Um, and that's the family dynamics and it is what it is, but we were able to finally I think have I made her. It. You oh, made hi, it, Alicia. Alicia. Hi. Hi, so, so I'll hi. stop. I'll stop there. Alicia's there. Alicia, I pretty much got to, you know, Shannon's she's wanted, she's hiding, she's missing. Nobody, you know, we can't report her missing to finally we're able to report her missing. I've been listening. Okay. Before <gasps> before you get started, Alicia, we have a question. Is Helen a suspect? Sounds like no one's been willing to make no one a suspect. They're willing to make nobody a suspect. They were um they did listen to me finally. The when I went, I brought three pages printed out of lots of information of people's names, pictures of them, their dates of birth, where they live, um yep. where can we they can be located. Yep, where they could be located. Um and I think the detective was pretty impressed. And I said to him, you know, she wasn't living with good people. Um, she had nowhere to go. Before this, she went to Tommy's. She couldn't go anywhere. And Alicia said, you know, Laura, you didn't talk to her then. I did. And I yes. talked to all those people. You can take it over, Alicia. Go. Numerous times. I mean, how I could go about this without being accusational. But I mean, honestly... I did a lot of slimy things just to get them to deal with me. I got them drugs <clears throat> just so I could be in a car with them and talk to them, you know. And every time she just left, she just left. And that's the most anybody would say until Laura, you know, me and Laura came to be in touch and work together. And when Laura came to be in touch, I guess they figured she wasn't in Shannon's life at the time and they could lie to her and she wouldn't find out the truth. But all they did was lie and keep lying. And I don't understand because everybody else, either you know or you don't know. You don't just lie. And the lies haven't stopped since. Like how uh, that lady Helen, oh, she went to Gordon Heights pregnant. No, you're twisting the story. Somebody in jail from Gordon Heights said to say hi to Shannon. How does that evolve to she's pregnant and went to Gordon Heights? These guys with the pit bulls, she got bit by walking into their yard. It was her bad. She knew it. You know, she was just preoccupied and walked on their property to go knock. Totally forgetting they had a, do a dog. It's not funny because she really got hurt bad. But yeah, she had they, they wanted to say in her head. Yeah, she got staples in her head, her arm, her side. Yeah. She, she, it was really a bad attack, but either way, they wanted to they want to say that she robbed these people and they're the ones who had it out for her. Well, if they had it out for her, they could have had her right then and there. 
that she wasn't in the basement robbing anybody. She knocked on the door. She got bit, called me crying. I called them. They helped her out. And then she went to a hospital. And then to cover their asses, excuse my language, to cover their butts, she even lied about where they were located just so they wouldn't be implicated in any lawsuits or any misdoings, you know. So she actually went out of her way to keep these people out of the pit bull situation. It, it, it's just utterly bizarre that they, like, okay, another random tip. Oh, she's at Jacqueline's. Last, so much as last summer, right, Laura? Yeah, and um, they, would throw out, they would throw out names. Um, I actually called Helen on a few occasions. Um, I wanted to actually go to her house, and my um, husband and my brother were like, you're out of your mind. Um, but I yeah. regret that now because Helen's no longer in her home, and she's no longer yeah. alive. So there goes my contact with Helen, but Helen wasn't, yeah. um, she wasn't really with it. She had a stroke um, and she was, I don't um, believe that. <laughs> yeah, she, but, she, but she was a user and um, it was hard to get, you know, a full conversation out of her and for her to really know what she's talking about. Um, Cause she would confuse Shannon with different people, but she would just say, Oh, Shannon left. Shannon, do you know a woman named Kathy in Florida? She would just throw out all these random Really weird, random nothing names. Is. Just nothing. And it wouldn't is. make sense. And she would just yeah, say she right? left. She just left. But the last time she left, Helen knew where she went. Yeah, if they knew where she went, they'd be like, oh, she went. They wouldn't hesitate to point, you know? Like, oh, she talked to her mom. She went home. Instead of making up really far-fetched stories, which I think they only started making them up because they didn't think they would know better. And it's funny because I called them on it. I was like, it's funny because I was with her with the pit bull people. Wink. She wasn't um, robbing anybody, you know? And I the know. story changed because they didn't know the truth. And they were like, oh, no, no. Other pit bull people. Because they weren't even close to the area where these people live. They were like Gordon Heights. And that's not where the pit bull people live you know um i i don't i don't think shannon's hiding um i saw that question um oh. if she if she is she's really really good at it Dude, and yeah somebody, she's not that good at it honestly and somebody's helping her because um from 2011 to 2013 she was sleeping on somebody's you know kind of finding somewhere to go somewhere to sleep um, and people knew where she was. Um, she had contact. She would have contact with her family. Um, she but, always. She, yeah. But that that last phone call she had with her mother was a volatile phone call. Um, that phone call she had with her mother on Easter. When Shannon called her mom from Helen's landline, she said she first spoke to her father and that didn't go well. Then she spoke to her mom. Her parents wanted her to come live with them. Shannon didn't want were, to go. She oh, didn't I thought it was the go. opposite. Okay. No, Shannon, that's okay. Shannon did not want to go. She did not want to go live with dad. She did not want to go live under dad's roof. Yeah, there was technicality. So, she wanted to go, just not you know, under so certain conditions. She got into an argument with her mother on the phone. They started arguing. You know, Shannon wanted to do what she wanted to do. She was an addict, you know, and the phone call was hung up on. And mom called back. Alicia, I don't know if that's you. Or yeah, that, there's like uh, a, some kind of wind sound or something. Let me hang on. I can. Me? Uh, I yeah. just muted you, Alicia, and it's gone. So, yeah, there's some kind of wind sound. Or wind sound? Something. Is that what it sounds like to you, Laura? Yeah. Something blowing on. The mic. I don't think anything's on. Let me check the. Okay, I'll put you down. Sorry. You guys go on without me, Lord knows. Okay. Everything. Okay. Like uh, we have a question, actually, Laura. If you want to. Yes. So Elizabeth Gibbs asked the other body. Did they confirm it wasn't her for sure? Yes, they did. And I um. I had to mute. The it. detective was very kind to tell me that it was not her, and that they did were able to get DNA from family to know it wasn't her. Um. I was 
so forever thankful that he took the time to meet with me. Um, I went to the fourth precinct. I actually first went to the fifth precinct because that's where she had her last arrest and she was wanted from. And they couldn't be bothered with me there, um, the fifth precinct in Patchogue. The one of the um, officers, she was talking to the other officer about what they were going to order for lunch um, while I was speaking mm -hmm. with her. Um, and then she advised me to go to the fourth precinct where she lived and they told me no. Um, but then finally that detective, um, when I said I, there's a body and it looks like her and it's in, on Long Island in an area where she could, somebody could have put her. Um, yeah, this is before said, she was on the yeah, right? Yeah, they said, wait, uh, let me call homicide. Homicide, he said, homicide wants you to wait right here. Um, so I was freaking out. I thought it was her. Um, and he said to well, me, he brought me in the back. He, you know, asked me a little bit of questions. And from all of the information I knew about Shannon, um, he could see I obviously was somebody that was important in her life. Um, he shared, you know, with me uh, information that it wasn't her and, you know, and gave me his card and said, please, if you can get somebody here with you to report her missing, I will help you do that because I think we should. Um, so he hooked me up with somebody, an detective in the fourth precinct. And when I was able to get somebody, a family member to come with me, that's what we did. Yeah, Tammy, um, that, that, that is all that comes up, unfortunately. Yeah. It, yep, that, that's, which is yes. shame. They don't even yes. really have that warrant anymore. And uh, I see this a lot um, that where if someone is a homeless or an addict or God forbid both, where they just, the police like don't even. I don't want to say they don't care, but they. Well, no, they said they, they they said to me they go. She doesn't want to be found. She's an addict. Yeah, and I she said, she's somebody's daughter. Like she's a person. And then I I was so far I was sort of crying when the first officer at the fourth precinct actually listened to me when I said I think my friend's body could have been found. I think unfortunately something like that had to sit come to in my lap um, for them to finally take it seriously that maybe she need she's maybe who knows where she is and I said to them I go yeah she's wanted I said nobody's looking for her no. I go she's wanted why if she gets arrested they're like oh now you got you got a warrant I said they're not looking for her you're not looking for her so don't tell me she's wanted so you won't you know report her I can't report her missing yeah we couldn't do anything for so long um, Helen's son is. Uh, um, <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, Laura. Let me. I just read it because a lot of people listen while they're driving and stuff. They don't watch the screen. So Edie Whitley asks, "Where is Helen's son?" Helen's so. son is panhandling off the LIE. So uh, if anybody on Long Island's listening, don't give him any money. <laughs> Exit 59 and 60. Keep driving. He's not a nice guy. He even does the sign of the cross the wrong way, trying to make you feel guilty. He acts like a homeless veteran, and he's got a home, and he's not a veteran. He tries to, um, what he limps like he, he, he got shot in the leg or something. His legs work fine. It's, um, yeah, I've terrible. actually, um, stopped to speak to him. Um, yeah, he never oh, met me. Yeah. I have I've talked to him plenty, but yeah. God praise you, Laura. Um, he never met me before. Um, he didn't know who I was. <laughs> so um I just went up to him and I was like, Hey, you're already. I pulled my car up. My husband wanted to kill me. I don't even think he knows yep. how I did this. Uh and he said, I gotta make sure I, 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 I said, I said, Do you know Shannon? And he like looked freaked. And I and he goes, I I, I gotta go make money. I said, I'll give you twenty dollars. <laughs> Here's money. And I pulled her over to the side of the road. Oh, we loved her. I don't know where she went. I loved her. We all loved her. That was his story. That was his story. And I was, and I said to him, I said, Artie, no one has heard from her since she left your mother's house. No one, not nothing. Where did she go? Well, well we don't even know she left the house, right? We just Correct. know she was in the house. We just know she was in the house. Yeah, I don't think she left the house. I, and that's what people go, what do, you, what, do you, what do you think? I said, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe she never left no. the house. Maybe she did leave the house. I don't know. I have no clue. The last time anybody that will say for sure that heard her voice is her mom and her father. These are the last people that will say they heard her voice on Easter, 
March 31st, 2013. What time did she talk to her? And then two hours later, call back. Do you know that or? Um, I no, I don't know exactly. Okay. I don't know exactly. See, and the thing to me, like, since I was like hanging out with Shannon on a regular at the time for her to want to go home, like even to her parents' house, because it was really toxic sends a big red flag to me. It tells me something really, really foul was going on there that night. Like something was wrong. And the only person they would let her call was her family. Cause I was calling that entire Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, nobody answered. Not one of my phone calls, not even her. I don't think they would let her cause she, you know, they knew me too. I'm not going to just stand by. I would have been there and they know it. Just like if they would have let me in the house that day, I would have been like, oh, that's Shannon's. Where's Shannon's? Do you uh, know? Yeah, How really, old is really Arnie? Really he was, oh my God. He he looks 70, but I think he's what, 49, Laura? Yeah, he's about 50. Okay. He, yeah, these people is... were all, all older than her, right? <laughs> yes. All Very older much than her. There's a few younger ones in there, but yeah, I don't 50. think they did anything you know like but they had like her helen's boyfriend had kids so he he was there his kids were also in and out constantly you know what i'm saying hmm. and uh carrie c makes a good point uh shannon was beautiful smart outgoing and kind she was brilliant for yes. most of her life and shouldn't be defined by her mistakes uh carrie i don't know if you're Maybe. saying that in general or about something that was said but i always do try to not dwell on that um, you know, it we, was a few we, years of her life. It was yeah. We bring it up only because it's because it's relevant to the story. But we're, we're well oh, yeah. aware that she's, uh, you know, more much more than that. Yeah, she was so fun. She was hilarious. And that's the sad thing is that she she lost contact with um, who she was before. Um, she, I feel like she let that go in about 2010 fully, 2011 is where she fully was saying goodbye to who I was before. Goodbye to Shannon, the college graduate, Shannon, the, you know, the go getter and kind of like, I feel like I can come. see, I, I feel like I can see the progression in the pictures like this one. It had to have been before, right? This the only one that is after. Well, yes, that's a before. The only one that's an after is the mugshot. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Everybody, even life, beat her down. You know. I'll just say that. We have a couple I'll people it. asking about the yard if it's been searched or uh, lied up. <laughs> oh my god! Do I dare? Nope, nothing's closest- been checked. The closest thing that's been being checked is me walking around trespassing on anything. And that's just me. So they, they don't I, want to I do much of anything. Acres. There's like power lines behind their house for tons of acres. I find myself roaming there constantly because it's just acres and acres of power lines right behind their block. I just mm-hmm. try and think like him, like because I don't think she left the house that night, you know? I saw her yeah. that Saturday. She, she was, no. She was, oh. shouldn't have gone back. A lot of people I, in the chat are saying they don't they don't think she ever left. It sounds like that could have happened, for sure. Uh, Yvette Aubin asks, is, is the house still owned by that family? I know you said Helen's passed on, but are there people from the family still in that house? No. Um, I, the house was a Section 8 house. Um, and when Helen was living there, her boyfriend, um, his, uh, children ended up living in there and the house ended up getting condemned and taken away from them. Helen, then Helen's boyfriend then moved away and she ended up out of state and she ended up moving into an assisted living facility. How did Shannon end up with Helen in the first place? Shannon ended (laughs) up living at Helen's because she was taking care of Helen's elderly mother who was living in the home. She's basically bedridden. She was, a, yeah, her sister. So yeah. that's how Shannon um, connected with Helen. I don't know who put her in contact with Helen. I don't know where that comes into play. Um, 
But that's where the relationship began with Helen was she was be, help, taking care of Helen's mother. That became, you know, she had a job. That was her job. And then it ended up being, um, that was her life, you know, where she lived. And those were her people. And that's who she used with. And that's who she stole a little bit of their pain meds from. And, you know. Right. Uh, speaking of Helen, Edie Whitley asked, what's she dealing? Uh, it's all alleged, by the way, guys, but that is a question. No, just using. Sorry, no, she it. was elderly. No. She got her pain meds from the doctor and kept them all. Okay. <laughs> and Schmidt asks, has Hel uh, I'm sorry, has Shannon's family been helpful whatsoever throughout this? Um, it's been um rocky. difficult. It's been rocky. Um, there's been some tough dynamics there. Um, and I've had some support. Yes. Definitely some support. Not on all end at all. And not in the way it should be. Like, it should have happened a lot sooner. But, I mean, even Shannon's mom, Laura and Shannon's mom went together and yep. got shot down. Yep. Like, they said we needed family. We we yep. snuck her yes. mom away and brought her yeah. and still got turned down yeah. on filing a report. Yep. Yes, I forgot to say that the first time um, I actually was able to get her um, family th with me, um, they were like, no, you can't. I'm like, you told me I had to bring family. I was like freaking out. I was like, it took me this long. You took told me to bring family. And the first thing the officer said was, why did you wait this long? It I'm took like, me this too. long. And finally when we were able to and we weren't able to do it then i ended up leaving calling the detective um and was very upset and he said please call me next time and i'm gonna really get you hooked up with somebody and i said thank you um and i just said i understand thinking that but to say that out loud when somebody is finally getting the courage to come and do this it was it was just devastating it was like how, how can i now get this person to come back with me when you just shut her down um, but thankfully I was able to, um, and now she is on NamUs. She does have a missing person, but apparently Suffolk County police do not, um, really, they, they don't even put it on her on, you know, the Long Island fugitive page or whatever that she's actually reported we missing. Did. It still just says, yeah, we did. We wrote it in the comments. It just mm -hmm. still says that she's wanted, which is pretty disgusting that it doesn't at least say that this person has been reported missing because right. they, even if it's a sentence, I mean, correct. Because I said. I've said to them, I said, she talked to her mother on March 31st. Her warrant, sorry, I'm looking at my other screen. Her warrant was issued on May, May. 24th. On May 24th. Yeah. I said, so when was her court date that she didn't attend that her warrant became? They couldn't tell me that. They have nothing. I said, I said how, how can you not tell me when her court date was that she got the warrant on? I said, because if she left to talk to her mother on March 31st, maybe she never even had an opportunity to go to court. Yeah, right. Yeah. I She didn't. I'm telling you, she got that warrant because she was already missing. I fully believe it. I can't remember her court date. I remember so much, and that's one thing I can't remember. But I just know she didn't want a warrant, well, you know? she had a court date in February that she... She had court in February that she didn't go to, but she had to mm -hmm. have had another court date other than that, because if she talked to her family in March, you know, she was discussing it with them having to go, you know, to court and so forth. And uh, Edie Whitley asked, why were they so controlling of her? I guess, meaning Helen and them. Oh, my God. I because guess. she had, she was this she did everything. She would go get stuff for them. She was their runner. Yeah, like Helen didn't have to leave her bed. Like turn your light on, make food, clean the house, do this, do that. It was just they made her a slave. I mean, and the big I can't say they all treated her like a slave, but they all took advantage in their own way. But in their eyes, they think she's living here for free and but she was actually paying in her own way, you know, like anytime she got something, she had to give them something, you know. So yeah. she paid in her own ways, but I guess they still felt they were owed something. 
because no like even so much as like i i've told laura like helen could be sitting on her bed and the light switch is right near her elbow and she'll still she would still call shannon in the room to come turn the light on him i couldn't deal with that i would have flipped <laughs> like you lazy sob doing that on yourself but that's right. <laughs> that's me you know but shannon dealt with it you know because she needed the place uh, Yvette Aubin asks, is the house still condemned? If so, she's saying maybe you could go check it out if it's still condemned. It's a plan. Um, in unfortun motion. Now, okay. un unfortunately, it's not condemned. Um, there's a family that's living in there now. A new mm -hmm. family living in there that keeps the house very nice. But yeah, there, yeah we, the, the property will be searched. Um, as the house um, I'm not even sure that the police haven't searched the house because they asked me the layout and how it, you know, you know, how the house was laid out. They were actually worried she was still in there. Honestly, when I spoke to the detectives, they asked me if I thought it was possible she was still in the basement or attic there. Um, no, she was not on bond. She didn't have a record. She just, they were, they were just released her. Okay. And she asked, did they control her with pills? It sounds like it, there was something to do with the drugs that kept us all together, right? And Shannon Please? had nowhere else. She had nowhere else to go. It was, she yeah, had it was no, nowhere to go. That was her last resort. That was it. She, that was, she had nowhere to go. It was that or sleep outside. I know they weren't very giving with their prescriptions, so. And we, she didn't stay there for the drugs. Right. She stayed there for she somewhere to sleep and somewhere to take a shower. Yeah, she's yeah. just doing doing she, them she, she, like, Yes. <laughs> she took pride in like what she looked like. So she really like honestly, I would and I have slept on a bench before ever considering going to that that house. And it's never even been a thought. She shouldn't have ever been in there and she shouldn't have ever went back there. Did you tell them about her truck? No. This a big part of what led to Shannon's downfall. Her family let her use the family truck. Like they had enough vehicles, you know. It was a pickup truck, like a four by four pickup, you know? Kind of champagne colored. And uh the first time she moved out of Helen's, uh her car got, her truck got stuck and uh, I just, I drove by it and it was perfectly fine. Like she had a flat tire. It was something stupid. She just didn't have a spare. I actually drove by it and called her at the time. And on my way back home, when I passed it the next time, the truck was totaled. Somebody took a bat to her car kind of total not like i crashed it total like somebody's i'm pissed kind of total and that's what really led to her big downfall because she always had a, a few jobs she always worked she always found ways to make money and have a place but once she had no ride she was basically she lost a lot of weight because she had to walk everywhere multiple times a day all over the place rode a bike, you know, having to go to her dealers who weren't in Gordon Heights. I won't say where they were because they don't know, <laughs> you know. But, yeah, it wasn't Gordon Heights because she wouldn't have been riding a bike from Alconcoma to Gordon Heights, Laura. <laughs> no. But, um, yeah. Yes, Jason. I'm sorry. I thought you were done. Um Yes. No, no, I was just going to say, so we have a question. I know you guys said that you both have watched it before. before so I, I know that you know that if anything comes up, sometimes they're difficult questions. You might hear. I, tr I, I try to put them on screen. If there's ever anything you don't want to answer for whatever reason, there's never any pressure for that. But so we do have a question. I mean, I mean, with no disrespect, is there a possibility she was? Yeah. I'm actually well, watching you, the comments on the side. Um, you can answer this question since we both kind of have different ideas on that. Um. I don't know. I don't think so. I don't know. Um, I don't believe she was. Um, I did have the guy that she lived with at one time, Tom. 
he but he would his stories would go all over the place he said she tried she wasn't good at it um was it really you know but i don't really know if i believed him because he was kind of all over the place in, in conversations so I, I wasn't part of her life then so uh, i think alicia might be better off, better to answer that it all the everybody has a different definition of a hooker a prostitute um if you want to say she wasn't on a corner it, like looking for guys she wasn't on like back page or facebook looking for men it's just that if her dealers per se wanted something she would trade something with them for that but she other than that she wasn't really pursuing prostitution, no. It's just, was she in a bad form or a, a few days here and there and did something? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, hell, she slept with Artie for a place at Helen's. What's worse than that? Uh, yep. um, so, you know, at... We always get to this point towards the end where I ask, I always say, like, do you want to speak directly to them? Um, I, I know I, I kind of feel weird asking it sometimes when, when someone says in the beginning, like, no, we do, we know what happened to her. And we don't think so. I don't know how if you guys wanted to try to speak direct to, to her or to anyone who may know something or any way you want to use that time by, by any means. I, I don't want to force you to, to, you know, do that if you don't think that that's helpful. Um, first I'll talk to Shannon, um, mm -hmm. and, and then I'll talk to anybody out there. Um, Shannon, if you're there or anywhere, we love you. We miss you. And we just want you to come back and it's okay. It's okay. It's okay to come back and we're all, well, no one's angry. Doors open. And for those of you that know something, please just say something. We, we just, just want to bring her, her home. I just want to bring her home. I just want her we to be to home. It's been seven years. Over seven years. Over. It's all, yeah. It's too long. It's way too long. You won't be they, if not even looking for prosecution. We just want to bring her home. Seriously, we there's no no jail time. You will be signed immunity. Deal with you and your God on your time. We just want to bring her home. And it, if Shannon already knows, my door's open. If she if she's out there. <laughs> and um. <clears throat> And you guys are both doing awesome. So I, I know Thanks. it's very tough. You're, you're representing her very well. Um, oh, did you say you wanted to, after speaking with her, you wanted to say something to someone who may know something or something like that? If anybody knows anything, we just, I just want to bring her to peace. Call I anonymously. You know, call anonymously. God, if something happened, if she OD'd somewhere and you just, someone just left her or just dumped her somewhere, please. Or if she's out there and you know where she is, just let us know. She, just tell us something that she's okay. Absolutely. Something, because there's been nothing, not a sign. Nothing, nothing. No, nothing I mean, I, that, not a I peep. Mean, nothing since that phone call. Straight nothing. looking since the day I lost touch with her. I've been straight, nonstop looking. And I'm gonna. Uh, a lot of people have asked me where she is. Uh, uh, nobody has really made up a lie or a story. It's just, it's bizarre. She had nowhere to leave to, unless like she, like I said, she didn't get kidnapped after she walked down my block because she called Helen's the next day. It's just everything ends at Helen's, and if they knew where she left, they wouldn't hesitate to point the finger, The finger, you know? We'd be glad yep. to go there. I've checked everywhere. You know, like I said, they told me some, well, I won't say they, one per, like, the leads and lies don't stop. She was at Jackie's house. Okay. So, 
I researched this person, Jackie, because she has a married last name now, and I didn't recognize. Ends up somebody we went to high school, and she lives like three houses down. So I could call Jackie and find out if Shannon really was with Jackie last summer. Like last summer, they were like, "Oh, she was like partying with Jackie last summer." I was like, "Oh, you would think if she was four houses down from me, I would have seen her." You know, so I called Jackie. Jackie hasn't seen her since 2012. My lies. The guy, Artie, when I questioned him, he wanted to tell me he was in prison when Shannon went missing. Now, we know, I know for a fact because I went there that Tuesday. Him and, and Helen's boyfriend answered the door. You were not in prison, my friend. Mm. You did it. You did a parole violation later on, maybe like October-ish, but not March or April. Nowhere around the time she went missing. Huh. It's just constant. That's usually not good when people are lying in these situations, of course. Uh, yeah, but they're, they're only lying to us. So what is it? You know? It don't, it don't matter in the long run, you know? And like, oh, here's another point I wanted to make. To me? Okay. Oh, my God. Um, Edith Whitley asked, does she have siblings? Yes. Unfortunately. She has two yes. brothers. Just two brothers, yeah. Um, I lost my train of thought now. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, sorry. That's okay. Um, well, I'll give you a minute to, to think of it. Well, we have a question. Uh, she's talking about Helen's boyfriend. Did you question Helen's boyfriend? Okay, um, well. I'll Go say ahead, this. Um, once me and Laura started partnering up and like talking and coming together on this, that's when the lies started coming out. That's when this whole fake pit bull story, everybody, every yes. single one of them has given Laura, Laura, the pit bull story because they know yeah. I personally know the pit bull guys and it's not the pit bull guys. <laughs> I'm going to give um, you, I'll, like, yeah. I had it. I had somebody um a friend of Helen's I a uh, friend who requested on Facebook and messaged her and asked her to contact Helen's boyfriend for me. Um and asked her, you know, to see what he remembers about Shannon um and where she went off to. And he said, I'm just looking at my computer, that she ripped off the dealer in Gordon Heights. And his pit bull got her and she took off because they were after her. Um, and I said to the friends, I said, first of all, that's not where the pit bull was. I said, and she went back to Helen's after that. I said, that was in August of 2012. She got bit by the pit bull, that incident. I said, this is March 2013 that she stopped. We last heard from her that she was at Helen's. I said, so I don't believe that. It's not. It's not true anyway. Like I, like I said, she had no reason to rob the the pit bull guys. I love them. I I do. I mean, as sick as that sounds, they they really saved my butt a bunch of times, even on just stupid things like, oh my god, I got stuck near them about four months ago. I needed a jump. They said somebody to come jump me. I mean, that's really nice of somebody. You know. I mean, they didn't have to do that. I even offered, you know, I would introduce them to the family. That's how confident I am that these people had nothing and no reason to hurt her. Like I said, oh, my, they were trade. They had no reason. She paid their bills. Why would they hurt her? She didn't rob them. Um, and those guys, there was no way to even rob. They didn't let you in the house, which is why she was in the driveway standing there desperate and ran on the property and knocked. That's how she got bit. She wasn't robbing anybody. And like Laura said, if she was really robbing a basement apartment, your dog got her, I don't think she would have ever left again. Right. Sorry. I was um, the, but yeah. Sorry. Sometimes I, I try to make sure we get as many on screen as possible. So sometimes I just pop them in there. Just, mm -hmm. I don't know. That's fine. Yeah. That's fine. So I know it's mm -hmm. kind of weird. Like you see it and you're trying to read and talk. So it's, I don't know how to do it. So I'm no, still learning. Right. Um, is there anything I didn't think to ask that's a pertinent detail that you want to 
get out there. Uh, uh, tattoos, identifying marks, oh, habits. Oh, anything. you want to show that uh, golden opportunity? Um, unfortunately, I don't have any pictures of Shannon's tattoos. She does have several no. tattoos. She has um, a tattoo of the New York Yankee symbol on her rib cage. It's a fairly large tattoo. She also has a tattoo of a shamrock with Mary down her thigh. Um, on her rib cage, on her um, on her hip, is an angel praying, I believe, with her brother's names. On her lower back, she has some type of scroll mark with her parents' names on them. So she does have a lot of tattoos. Um, she does. She wears glasses. Um, she usually has contacts, so she probably. I don't know how you know. Doesn't have I those think right now. But she wouldn't have them anyway. But okay, she wouldn't have them anyway. So yeah, but she does have several. She does have several tattoos, um, and that's actually not on her uh, wanted page. And I actually called to tell them that years ago people, when they wouldn't let me file her missing. Um, but like, that is what it is. I know people's tattoos don't define them. Do you have a tattoo of the one I showed you? I won't, You don't have to show his face. Do you have the tattoo of what Artie got, Jason? Uh, well, oh, yeah, I did. I, I have the description. You said you, the one you told me about, you mean? Oh, yeah, I thought I sent you a picture. <laughs> no, no, I don't think you did. I'll double check. Um, but I just, I'm just curious. Is the reason you didn't mention the Yankees tattoo because you know I'm from Boston or? Oh, no, no I didn't I'm, know I'm, you were from Boston. I'm just oh, joking. Geez. Shannon, oh my God, huge, huge, huge Yankees fan, like unbelievable. We had when we lived together, she'd watch. Oh God, he was cursing, I screaming, wear a Yankee cursing hat. screaming like a truck driver. <laughs> yeah, she That's loves the Yankees. She loves watching the Yankee games. Thank Let you for making to, smile with her. Let me apologize to everyone local to me for. Uh, all <laughs> I usually um, wear a Yankee hat. I didn't want to get any haters. <laughs> uh, Alicia, did you want to send me the picture? I can show it, uh, or I can oh, well, if you want to explain. Do that. So you mentioned, yeah, yeah. So I this sure guy will. has a really, really weird tattoo, guys. Uh, it's worth mentioning it was got uh, apparently, anyways, after her disappearance. Uh, although it was quite a bit after, I, I understand. Uh, give me one second, and I will. Sunday people get I'm sending it now. Okay. Um okay. So one sec, guys. Sorry. Um let me see if there's any you know, I'll ask a question while I wait, sorry. Um uh I just got here. Uh no, I don't think so. It's so not she's not someone on Route One Elizabeth, New Jersey, right? That sounds right. I don't know what I don't know what she's referring to. Oh, you had to put that up there too, huh? That you represent Boston well, huh? Oh my mm -hmm. God! I, I, I put oh, you up. had to put that up too, huh? Oh, I yes. was I was trying to bust your chops. I only read the first three words, and I just got myself. Uh -huh. with them. <laughs> <laughs> um, see, I'll save myself with the other Tammy's comment. Okay, guys, let me pull the picture. <laughs> Give me one second. Uh, wait, am I showing my screen? Okay, I'm not supposed to show Messenger. Uh oh my God, he does look older. Um, yes, yeah, right. 50. Yeah, he looked uh, about seventy. I would say is right. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. One second, guys. He even looks good there. Huh? Is that right? <laughs> We're just pulling up pictures, guys. Oh my god. Any other questions, boy? Yeah. If there's any questions in the chat, you guys can answer those. Uh, I, I I can't look at the screen right now. Oh, okay, really? so so Helen passed away, right? Who would be the next person to ask maybe down the line? Um, the next person to ask, we've been trying to speak with them. That would be Artie. That would be um, Helen's boyfriend, Rich. Uh, yeah. That would be Helen's kids that were in and out of that house. Um, I've actually spoken to one of, I mean, uh, Rich's kids that were in and out of the house. I actually spoke to one of Rich's children um, who did use with Shannon um, at the time. And he actually moved Shannon back into Helen's house from Tom's house, Tom's apartment. And he has nothing to say, nothing to say where Shannon went. He doesn't know. He don't know um, where he moved her. He doesn't know where he moved her to. And I said, didn't you move her back to Helen's? 
Um, so it's, you have from, you know, the patriarchs of the family down to the younger, the uh, young ones, you know, all saying the same thing. And, you know, and he's the same thing. We all loved her. We, we took care of her and fine. But some, and I said, you know, I, I, you know, messaged him. He saw that we're doing this and I messaged him and I just said, you know, not accusing anybody of anything. I just want to find her. I said, I don't think everybody, I think there's a lot of, fi I don't think everybody's been truthful. And nope. that's my problem. Do you want to, while, while I show it, well, actually, I, I was going to Zoom, didn't I? Do you want to explain it, either of you, uh, the tattoo? Alicia. Okay. Well, up close, it's two gravestones that say RIP with like a wooden cross behind it and clearly a skeleton with a shovel leaning on a tree. And it's done really poorly. You could see the hesitation marks. It's really poorly done. And it's just disgusting. I take it as a kick in the face, but that's what he's going for, and I know it. But it's basically two gravestones, so there's probably somebody else out there that... There's a cross, that, too. Yeah, I think, yeah. I, I, oh. I, he, they all always, whether to sound tough, or just to keep people off their property, they would be like, I'll shoot you and bury you in my backyard. We've all killed people, even Helen's boyfriend. But I took that as because he was in, like, he was actually, he's actually a veteran. Like, Richie and his brother, they're veterans. So I kind of took it as, like, okay, maybe they're just bragging about their their time in, in the Navy, you know? But, yeah, no, Artie's never been in anything, and he still has always bragged, and armed robberies, like, just, Mr. I'd rather hold a side than commit violent crimes. That's his slogan. And I do want to mention, I, I, sorry, I forgot to say this at the beginning, because I... Uh, there's a group, guys, check it out in the description, Be United Missing Persons. I'm sure they'll probably be contacting you, Laura and Alicia. Um, typically, I have their flyer beforehand, so I pull it up first and I mention them. It totally slipped my mind because I didn't have the flyer, so I apologize to Be United. But check them out, guys. They're great, and uh, they did make a flyer for Shannon, so I'll bring that up in a moment. Thank you very, thank thank you. very much. Yeah, they're, they're great, guys, and they, they do a lot of like behind-the-scenes work and stuff, too. That's so awesome. awesome. Thank you. Um, yeah, there's things that you want to like, like we want to search, we want to look places, we want to do, but we don't know like how much this cop is willing to do and how far he's willing. To, the detective, my my bad, that's kind of disrespectful. Um, you know, and the detectives are willing to do, you know, right? Like, is it, it just so like, far yeah. gone? They're just going and doing, like. They're just going through the process, you know, or are they really trying type thing? Right. So I don't know. I I kind of hope they're trying, but seems we'll like see. they're, they're. So you said it seems like they're not at times, but Laura, did you say there was? I know. Did you say that all he did was listen to you, or did he actually actively start to take part? That guy that you said you were crying when someone actually cared. Um, he was the one that actually called and uh, called homicide. Um, when I did speak with the, um, the detective now that is in charge of the case, it, uh, it kind of just seems like they're waiting, waiting to bring, get one of these people in for them to have a reason to talk to them. Um, and they haven't had an opportunity to bring them in yet. Technically, um, I, I, yeah. I, I'm sorry, Laura. Go no, go ahead. What with COVID, actually, they a few of them have been brought in on charges. But with COVID in New York, they're giving you tickets. You don't go to court. You get a postponed arraignment. Like they'll be like, whereas normally you would be in jail overnight and and you would be arraigned in the morning. They they're giving like nine month delays on arraignments because of COVID. Our courts our courts really still aren't open. So even uh, if they were to get charged, they wouldn't even be charged. They'd be like, all right, come back in nine months, and they would bail because the only one Artie has is gone. 
Um, quick, uh, I'll ask this one first because it's kind of yeah, quick. Yeah, that's like around 2016, 17, like in the middle okay. of there. Sorry. Okay. No, it's okay. No, that that's exactly what we wanted to know. I thought you had said 17, so I just I was going to make sure. And then Carrie C. asks, Alicia, Sorry. are you still in contact with the Pitbull people and Helen's family? Well, Helen's family is mostly gone, right? Helen and Artie, I think, are Helen's family, basically. But um, I, I try and keep in touch and, and keep informed on as many as I can. And, yes, I still keep in touch with the Pitbull guys, absolutely. They became nice, you know. They became nice, decent citizens through the years. You know, they're good people. Okay. Uh, Edie Whitley says, "Why is it so hard for police to just help? Why is that the family has to do all the work? That is a very common thing, unfortunately. And uh, COVID is. Oh, I shouldn't have said that word. YouTube doesn't like that word. Anyways, has been a travesty <laughs> for our missing families and friends of the missing, and that's true. Um, mm -hmm. So I think what back when we had asked about tattoos, you said that we had, is there anything that we didn't think to cover that's important? No. Okay. Glad I finally made it in. <laughs> uh, I know. Thank you. I got worried there for a second. Yeah, I thought we weren't going to, at a certain point, I thought we weren't going to get you. I'm glad we did. I'm just going over <laughs> pictures one more time. And Laura was like, oh, no, I was expecting Alicia. <laughs> I know. I was like, you can't do this to me. I can't do this by myself. I don't want to <laughs> um, it's just all right, guys. It's, no, go ahead. It just ends like I was gonna. It just ends on Deer Road. I've talked to. I can't even tell you how many people I have personally talked to, hunted down, found. Nobody has yeah. seen her. Nobody has seen her or spoken to her since 2011 or 2012, primarily. So I do it's have just crazy. Both. I don't Are think okay somebody with... miraculously picked her and her stuff up because they told how they how, they told Shannon's mom that she didn't so much as leave a sock behind, right? So what she just carried ten garbage bags of stuff on her back. I I I don't understand that. They also made sure to call Shannon like this old lady Helen. Made sure to call Shannon's mom. Not for that long. Maybe a couple of times from 2013 to 14. To see if Shannon was okay and made it home. Now, in my eyes, they know her dad was, like, important retired detective. You know, they, you know, her brother, you know. So, I think they were just covering their butts. Like, oh, let's see if the family has done anything yet. And when they realize the family isn't even able to get a missing report, we're good. And they stopped calling at that point. Not to accuse them of anything, but, I mean, I care about Shannon. I haven't stopped calling anybody. I think it was just a ploy to see if they ever did anything about it or not. Well, if there is anybody out there that knows anything, guys, please, please come forward. There's no such thing as something being too small or too inconsequential no. or, or assuming they already know. If you know something, call. Um, as far as who to call, uh, you have the Suffolk County, New York Police at 631-854-8400. Case number is 20-312-455. We also have both Alicia and Laura's links below. Uh, I'm assuming you both are okay with your Facebook links being down there? Mm -hmm. Of course. Okay. That's fine um, by I me. Did, I think I asked for it. And uh, <laughs> just a lot of people saying that they're so sorry and that uh, supporting you and stuff in the chat. Um, but uh, other than that, thank you so much for coming on, guys. You did awesome. Thank you. Um, no, I know thank I'm just you. proud of you. And, um, you know, I pray somehow. I always pray for a positive resolution. Of course, I pray something comes on and she was just running and scared and who knows. And I know that we would love nothing more than for that to be the case. Seriously. If that yeah. were the case, Shannon, your, your charges are clear. You have nothing to worry about. The page is up simply for comments. Shannon, if you're out there, it's time to come home Been a really long yeah. time. And, uh, what you did isn't life ending anyway. So, you know, you come Ain't home, nothing. clear it up and, and and move on and you'll be fine. Um, please check out Be United Missing Persons as well, guys. Uh, 
They're awesome. Their links are below. Uh, and if you have any information, you can contact Laura and Alicia at the links below. To, uh, you can contact Suffolk County, New York Police, who I just gave the information to. You can also send something to me. My, all my information is below in the description. You do have to click show more or show everything, whatever, whatever it says. Uh, you do have to expand it. Uh, you can send it to me. I always say it doesn't make a ton of sense to only send it to me. You want to talk to the family or the authorities, but for whatever reason, if you only send something to me, I will pass it along, by, of course. Uh, but try to contact the families and the authorities. Uh, I'm sorry, not family, but but the friends. In this That's case, fine. Obviously. Yeah, okay. she's on name is Facebook, anything. Yep. Thank you so very much for giving us this opportunity to bring awareness to Shannon's case. No I am we're forever, forever grateful. Thank you. Yes. And I'll Thank do everything so I can to get, to get this out there, as many eyeballs as possible, because you never know who's who knows something. Nope, you never no. know. All right. Thank, Thank you to you everyone again. in the chat. Alicia, Laura, thank you so much. And everyone have a great night. Love you, Shannon. All right, guys, I'll see you all tomorrow. Click subscribe below, set the notification bell to all, and uh, try to help bring Shannon home, guys. All right, everyone have a good night.